All right, so I'm going to just take a few minutes and show you how I actually sharpen these planes. I sell planes on eBay a lot. I clean them up and I sharpen the blades so that they're usable instead of just sitting on a shelf for display. I think planes should be used because after all, that's what they're intended to do. And these, you know, Stanley made these things by the millions, so it's not like they're highly collectible. They're, they're better off being used as tools. So actually, here's my tool cabinet right here. I'll show you real quick. Oh, look at that tool cabinet. All oh, those tools are, well, most of them are antiques. I think I got like 300 tools in there, and I had 200 of them were antiques that I've refurbished, cleaned up, and used. A lot of bench planes up there. So here it is. This is the bench plane that I cleaned up, the number seven. As you can see right here. There's the blade. And let's take it apart. All right, after a closer examination of the blade, you see it's kind of pitted. Surface pitting for being out in the weather for garage for probably 30 or 40 years, but I can easily get rid of that. That's not an issue right there. It's still going to be give me a good edge. So what I do is I put it on my Tormac. I bought one of these about 10 years ago. Paid real good money for it, and I have never regretted it. It's truly one of the nicest tools I own, if not the nicest. And here is a bucket of water with some water stones in there. I got what do you got here? You got 800, 400, 4,000 grit pan stone. And then I got a 12,000 grit water stone here. This is how I I hone my edge. I, what I do is I grind my bevel on the Tormek and then I hone my edge with the water stones. So. So what I do is I fill up the water trough with water, obviously, that's how it works. I just fill it up to the line. And then I have my edge. I'm going to try to clean up, flatten the back side of the blade as much as I can. It's not going to work that great. I mean, it's, you know, it's an old blade, so it's not going to be super flat, if you want to call it that. It's going to have some ridges here where is the shiny part but you still got to make sure that the very edge of the blade is clean and sh um, shiny like a mirror not quite like a mirror but shiny so I'll do this probably for eh, a few minutes not too long because I know it's if I was gonna do the whole thing flat with a flat back it'd take me probably an hour and it's, it's really not necessary Alright, so I've been doing it for a few minutes now, and you can see how the very front of the blade is shiny. I don't care about here. I'm not cutting anything here. All I'm doing is I want the very front of the blade to be sharp. So as long as I'm satisfied with that, then I'm going to go ahead and grind this bevel here. It's got to be ground to about 25 degrees or so. So I'm going to use to set it up with my jig that I have here. Put it and set it up, and I'll grind away. Alright, so now I've set up the blade inside the jig and I'm trying to find the bevel that I need. So Tormek comes with this uh, jig, whatever you call it, angle finder. Stick it on there and then you want this little area here, right in here, to match the blade to be perfectly on the same plane, I guess you could say. Line it up just like so. And tighten the back. All right. So now you got your 25 degree bevel there, and you're gonna cut away. Hold it, pull back and forth. And I use 
a stone grater, which is this. It has a coarse and a uh, smooth texture. And I rub it over the stone to give the stone a, a coarser cutting action so it'll cut the metal faster. It actually works. It's kind of bizarre that it does. But it changes the grit of the stone. So I'll do this until I get a nice clean edge all the way over through the blade. Let's see how it's working. Alright, there you go. You see that? You see how it's shiny in the middle? The two ends still got to be honed away, ground away. So I'll just keep going. Alright, now you can see that I have a clean, fresh edge all the way through the blade. The camber basically has been removed from the blade. I'll put a little camber back on. I'll show you how to do that in a second. But I just want to make sure that the entire blade is nice and clean. On the other side, you can still I still have the nice, fresh cutting clean of the uh, back side of the blade. Still fresh metal. There's very little pitting in the blade, which is very important, so you don't get little uh, ridges when you cut wood. I'll go back clean up the back side of the blade like this. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little back bevel on the blade. It's known as the ruler trick, but I don't use a ruler because I can't really do it like this. It's, the ruler trick is mainly used for uh, water stones. You put a ruler in the back of the blade and it changes the degree of the blade by like one or two degrees. And the purpose of that is, is that you don't have to sharpen or clean this metal all the way clean to make it perfectly flat. If I put a slight angle to my blade and do it like that, maybe one or two degrees, that essentially is going to put a back bevel on the blade so I get a nice clean cut at the cutting edge. All the metal is going to be uniform and flat. And I do this for just a minute or so. And there you go. The whole edge is now has a what they call back bevel. There's also a burr here. And you need to cut that burr off by going back to your stone. Remember I did first I did with the coarse grit? Well now I'm gonna switch over. Now I'm gonna do it with the fine grit. <laughs> you know, like I say, it changes the cutting the, the uh, changes the cutting of the stone makes it a finer grit stone. How it does it, I don't know. I've never, I'm not a, I'm not a stone guy. I don't know how it actually does it physically, but it does work. So I'm going to go back over. I'm going to clean that edge up, make it a little bit finer grit. Okay, so now I'm at my water stones. I got a coarse, a medium, and a fine grit stone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to Use the entire stone. Sharpen the burr off. Go all the way around. Use the entire stone so that you don't have a big dip in the middle of your stone. It's very easy to do with water stones. They're so gentle. I don't use a chisel gauge, a sharpening gauge. I don't, I don't think that's really necessary. Sharpen that baby. And again, the ruler trick. You want to bring the back of your blade up just a slight bit so you can sharpen that back bevel. Again, I don't actually use a ruler. I just do it by eye. Why not? Let me go like that. So now I go, I sharpen that burr off by using the medium grit stone. You can see all the slurry that's coming from the metal. It's actually sharpening the metal away. Again. Now it's, I guess it's easy to keep this angle consistent. Because remember, when I 
ground, the bevel, it has an arch to it, it has a slight arch to it. So this blade has a slight arch, so I'm basically removing the back and the front of the metal of the blade when I hone it. And these go back in the water. Let's see if you can see that. This is my final grit. 12,000 grit water stone. Lift up the blade just a tiny bit. I'm lifting up the blade right now. Sharpening that back up. There's the blade sharpened. Can you see how this part of the blade is sharper than the inside, the middle of the <laughs> beveled edge? All right, because again, I'm only sharp. I'm only using this part of the blade. This part does nothing. It's a ride, ride against the wood or so. If you want to claim. Here's the back of the blade. You see how it's. Well, let's see. There's the back of the blade right there. You see how it's nice and clean. You get a nice good edge from it. Just like that. There's my edge right there. So there's my edge, super super sharp right at the point tip, the back side of the blade, it's nice and clean, it's almost a mirror image, not quite a mirror but very clean. No little divots or pits in the blade to get a nice smooth cut. And the ultimate question is how sharp is it? I mean some people take their hand and they shave off the the uh, hairs on their hand to make sure it's that sharp. In fact, you can see right there. If you can see it or not. I actually cut some of my hair. But I don't do that because I don't want to risk getting cut. Basically, if you take a piece of paper, you can pretty much cut this thing any way you want. You can hold it up tight. So, if it cuts a piece of paper cleanly, then it's sharp enough. So now that it's sharp, i got to put it back in a plane, tune it, and then use it. Okay, so now I put the cap iron back on the blade. I leave about eight sixteenth to an eighth of an inch of clearance. Uh, there's a debate about how much clearance you need within the cap iron to the blade's edge, but I always just use sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. It works fine. Uh, because this is a joiner plane, I'm not like looking for gossamer thin shavings. I'm just looking for shavings that are, you know, semi-thick because I'm just using this to joint wood, not as a smoothing plane, like a smoothing plane, like a number four or three, you want gossamer thin shavings, but this is what I call a medium cut plane. It's just something to give you a nice clean edge and you want to do it relatively fast. So 16th to an eighth of an inch clearance on the cap iron or blade's edge, I think it's fine. Basically, I put the plane back in the back in the tool and then I test it out <clears throat> I figure out how much leeway of the, the uh, thumb screw I need testing it pulling it back and forth and see how it cuts so let's give it a test oh my goodness that's too much way too much so I'll push this up I'll heighten the blade turn this counterclockwise Bring the blade back up. 
give it a test. So now I'm not doing anything. So I got to pull it clockwise, turn it clockwise, until I start getting an edge. Just trying. All right, it's almost got it. There we go. See, now I'm getting on the right edge. I'm going to pull a little bit more. Okay, it's cutting on the right side of the wood. So I'm going to change the lateral adjustment. Push it to the right a little bit. It starts cutting in the middle. Oh, look at that. There you go. You see that? That is how you want your joiner. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. There you go. And again, like I say, is it the best cut in the world that you've ever seen? No. But is it a good enough cut that you'll actually be able to work with it and use it in your furniture making? Absolutely. You know, I'm not trying to make, set a world record on the longest and thinnest cut. <clears throat> because like I say, this is a 100 year old tool. I'm just trying to use it to build something with. I'm not trying to impress my woodworking friends by having these gossamer thin shavings. But they work fantastic. Alright, 